God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Robert Jenkins. It is a Friday, 5.30 on time. As always, me and my wife like to take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate all those that support us on a regular basis. And when you take out the time of your day, some of you do it every single day um, to listen uh, from a word from the Lord. So um, we just like to take, take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate that. As always, we ask you to please hit the share button and share this on your page. And also tag people. You can take a couple minutes out of your time and hit that tag button and tag people. That helps us. It helps more viewers. Come on. Good to see you, Michael. So as always, we appreciate that. Good to see you, Tasha. Praying everything goes well. So as always, we thank you and we welcome you to Divine Insight Ministries. Uh, we're out of New Orleans and we're on five days out of a week, Monday through Friday, 530 Central Standard Time and 630 Eastern Standard Time. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. Please hit that share button and tell people. There are a lot of new faces. Good to see you, Sister Thompson. Thomas, God bless you. Um, a lot of new people and we thank God for that. Okay, we want God has called us to get the word out to the nations, not just the congregation, but the nation. Okay, so God bless you as always and I hope you've been blessed. We are still talking about, <laughs> it's amazing God has given us so much, understanding, covering, and spiritual growth. We are on part 10. Okay, good to see you. You do, God bless you. Uh, understanding, covering, and spiritual growth. Okay, good to see you, Rita. Uh, we're on part 10. We'll probably, if the Lord say the same, we'll pick up Monday and do a part 11. Uh, I don't know for sure, but God has given me so much to say on this. So we'll see what he has to say. Okay, uh, as always, we love you and God bless you and welcome to Divine Insight Ministry. Good to see you. Brother Smith, we know God bless you. Nisi, God bless you. All right, Sister Fox, God bless you. So let us pray. Father, we thank you right now for your anointing. Thank you for your mercy, for your grace. Lord, open our hearts to hear a word from the Lord. Give us your inspiration. Breathe through us. Allow us to die to our own thoughts and our own mindsets and to be submitted to you. We bless you, God, because you've been so faithful and you've been so kind. We trust you even with unseen things that we can't figure out. We trust you. When we don't know, we trust you. So we thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost, have your way, as always. We feel your presence. We yield to your presence. We submit to your presence. Lead us and guide us into all truth. And bless your people everywhere to have a greater desire for you and to begin to pray for other people. Give us a praying heart, a praying spirit. Okay? And thank you, Lord Jesus, for all things. Amen. Okay, we're going to go into part 10. Let me share a lot of things with you. Um, my life has taken on a, a a leap of faith. Moving to New Orleans was a leap of faith, and marrying my wife uh, was something that I know that God called me to. And ever since that transition happened, meeting my wife and moving to New Orleans, God has been has be, has begun to develop me in such a way. Um, something that I dream that he showed me when I was a baby, but I didn't think I could reach it. I didn't think that I would ever be at the place I'm, I am at now. I didn't think that, um, I didn't even think I, I, I would ever find the wife that would understand me at the level that I'm at now. Uh, or even family members. I didn't think that I could be embraced at, at the level that I knew I was called. Sometimes God calls us to places that we haven't seen much of as example. God, I feel the anointing. I'm talking to you. You, you can, you. Many of us, you feel, you feel what God has called to you, but it, 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 it's, it's simple. Are people gonna let you be who God called you to be? It's a question. When, when, you, when you know what God has said. At the same time, you have a void that long for people's love and their approval. But you can't settle with waiting for people's approval when the call to who you are is so strong. And not only so strong, but it has so much meaning and substance to it that you know that to deny it would be selfish on your end, but it would be destructive because, you're, because what God has given you is bigger than you. And that people, you know, when God calls you to be a billboard, 
that God displays your life openly to the world so that the world can have direction, so that the world can have clarity, that you've been chosen to be such a vessel and, and, and the pressure that God chose you to suffer and then to be willing to accept it, to get to the place that you make statements like, for God I live and for God I die. You know, you can't be great in the earth for people until you're willing to be great in the earth regardless of people. Let me say it again. You can't be great in the earth for people until God brings you to a mentality that you'll be great in the earth regardless of people. See, there's a time in your life that you must say, you know what, not my will, thy will be done. And if it means leaving everybody, if it means obeying God to a level that I have to forsake all, if it means to that I have to center my love only for him, sometimes we have temporary loss for a permanent gain. Sometimes you have to be willing to give it all up and to trust God with it. And, and that's where... I am, and God has led me to a place, and I have a wonderful wife and a wonderful family, and, and God is now uh, connecting me to people who love me for who I am, understand me for who I am, and, uh, and are being blessed for who I am, okay? So that's for somebody, okay? I want you to know that, okay? Because uh, while I was praying, God speaks to me. Sometimes when I'm talking, he's talking to me, and sometimes when I'm praying to him, he's talking to me, and when I was praying, he was saying, I'm doing some things uh, from the unseen. I'm doing some things from the invisible place. And tell the people, they'll know who they'll know who you're talking to. They'll know it. Okay? Some of you right now listening, I'm talking to you and you know it. That God says, just trust me in this. Just trust me. Do it the way I tell you to do it. Stay the way I tell you to stay. Remain faithful to what I have called you to be. And trust I'll bring them around in time. I'll bring them to the place in time. I'll bring you to the place of emotion in time. That's okay. Just walk with me through the valley of the shadow of, shadow of death and fear no evil. For I'm with you. That's okay. Uh, God says, I'm so confident in what I'm going to do for you that I don't have to remove your enemies to do it. I can prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I can do it. I'm doing some things from the uh, unseen, from the invisible place. That was for you, okay? All right, let's move into understanding, covering, and spiritual growth today, okay? Charles Leonard, thank you, man. I was going to call you today. I was talking to my wife yesterday, and I said, I haven't heard from my son, Charles Leonard, and so I was praying for you, so it's good to see you, man. God bless you and love you as always, okay? Understanding, covering. We're going to walk some heavy things today, so I hope you have scheduled some time to stay with me because we may go a little longer than usual. Uh, I'm, I, that's another thing that I'm, I'm feeling a call to prayer. I pray all the time, but God is moving me into um, a travailing. I was even looking at space in my in my den, and I'm gonna have to make room for an altar call somewhere in my house. I'm gonna have to build an altar because I feel God calling me. He's, you know, my wife gets up early and cooks breakfast for my for the Sunday we raise our grandson, uh, and then I've been getting up lately with them on that. But I do feel that God is calling me. Uh, to a, a, even an early morning prayer, like a four, five thirty prayer in my spirit. I just, just some things that God is just, He's just doing some things with me. He, um, he's just doing some things with me. I'm changing, <laughs> uh, and, and sometimes we have to tell people, "Don't touch me," because I'm trying. I'm changing. When you are, uh, when a caterpillar is being changed into a butterfly, if you touch it, it dies. And there's sometimes you are in a life where you're not allowed to be touched by people's opinions and their thought process because God is changing you. Uh, you're changing. There's some people who are going to be mad. I feel the anointing today. There's some people who are going to be mad at your change. Even though they pray for your change, they prophesy for your change, but they weren't ready for your change. And God is changing you to become what God has called you to become. And they're going to be upset, but that's okay. Sometimes you have to tell people, don't touch me, I'm changing. Uh, but I, this altar call because God is calling me into prayer and to have serious intercession for people. And one of the things that he want me to do is go through my phone list and go through my Facebook page and write down the names of men that are attached to me and begin to travail for them, to begin to really, 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 really travail and pray. Something is coming. Did you hear me? I said something is coming to the earth. Uh, it may seem silent right now. We don't hear a whole lot about uh, President Donald Trump, but I'm telling you something is coming. 
And if you're not in that, that secret place of the Most High, don't forget Psalms 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. We have to be in that place. God has called us to a place of prayer. God is going to speak to you and tell you. And not only that, man, I feel the anointing. Let, let me just flow with God today. We're going to be here for a little while. Uh, God may be tell, telling you to start saving water and telling you how to redo your grocery list. And God is going to begin to talk to you about finances. I, I'm going to speak on that maybe next week or the following week about finances. There's some things that are coming that God is about to prepare us. When this lump sum of money comes to you, do not uh, be... Um, do not be uh, wasteful and use this on the wrong source. God has not sent a lump sum of money to you, and much more is coming. Finance is about the increase for the remnant. Those who have positioned themselves in God, those who have positioned themselves in God, you're going to get a great financial blessing. And I'm not a, a money preacher, but I'm telling you what God has been dealing with me. And this is for what's coming so that we'll be able to be able to help those who are being in need. Many people are going to need shelter. Many people are going to need food. Many people are going to be clothed. God is moving us to a greater level. Listen, uh, the time that we live in now is, 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 is bigger than uh, being a part of a, of a building. Okay? You have to become the church. Become the church. God is calling you to become the church. This is a time that we're going to help people. And God's going to bless you with favor. He's going to put many of you in position that you can hire people. Uh, many, uh, he's going to put you in position to be able to help people. Uh, rooms are going to be added onto your house. God is going to have you bless you with cars and houses. This is not for you. Listen, I'm telling you, there's an increase in the body of Christ. And do not take that money and use uh, uh, unwisely and, and spend it all on you. And then when the emergency comes, you don't have the emergency funds because you didn't listen to God. Because you thought this was about you. It's not about you. It's not about you having. And we thank God that we're allowed to live in the overflow. I talked about it yesterday. We're allowed to live in the overflow. But the overflow is for our cup to be filled, but other cups to be blessed. And God is not causing you to be filled without others being blessed, okay? So God is calling me to that. So in that prayer, and so in that prayer, and, and it's like the last two weeks, I have not been able to sleep well. I've been getting rest, but I haven't been able to sleep well. It's like God been waking me up. And like every four hours, I wake up. And, um, and, 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 and I really hear God. It's like almost even when I'm sleeping, uh, the conversation with God, he's been spending a lot of time with me sharing and this is what God does. I'm going to talk about this again. When you're under a proper covering, when you're under a proper covering, then the men and women of God, they hear things. We should not be surprised by what's coming to the earth when we are the soul of the earth. God warns us. He warns us and he prepares us. But we're not listening. When you go through your day, I don't care if you're watching television or the news, you better be listening to the Holy Spirit. What the Spirit is warning us our job is to prepare the people, to sound the alarm, to blow the trumpet. And people want to be prophet for, for profit, for P-R-O-F-I-T, but not for the whole prophetic word to be able to hear, to be a seer. What do you see in the spirit? What do you see that's coming towards your family, towards your marriage? What do you see? Are you on your knees? Are you praying? Abraham saw what God was about to do to Solomon and Gomorrah because he was in prayer. He, every place he went, he built an altar. And so he built an altar because he understood the direction must come from clarity. And when you don't have clarity in what God is saying, then your directions are, are, are cloudy. And, and so we have to pray that God uncloud our, our clarity because you're seeing out of fog glasses. So you can't see, you can't see uh, very well and very clear. And this is important. We need to be accurate in the time that we're living in. We're living in a time that the Spirit of God is flowing the anointing of God is flowing out of our bellies, flow li ri rivers of living water. I'm speaking to you. And this is part of a covering. And, and you notice that I put on the last post that if you are under a covering, that you are not m being filled by the precious Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Or you're being under a covering that is robbing you. And I'm going to get into it today, so I want you to stay with me. And I want you to tag as many people as you can to tell them about, about today's teaching because I'm going to expose false coverings from the Bible. And that you're being destroyed. And death will be the result. People are dying mentally. They're dying spiritually. And they're dying physically because they are under a covering that does not love them. Okay? That does not see them for who they are. Okay? And there's a great frustration that has, has been released in the earth. And this frustration that is on the earth is from the church. There are church people who were raised in church all their life. But they're tired. 
They're tired of the building. They're tired of the false covering. They're tired of giving their money and don't have room enough. They got so much room to receive. Matter of fact, they're not receiving anything. Okay? And, and God has allowed this frustration to come to separate us. And you better quit when God builds a frustration to pull you away from something that's killing you. That you keep trying to be with it because you want religion. But you have to see it. God is trying to free you. And sometimes pain, sometimes God disconnect things so you can be in right in alignment with him. Because your thinking is off. Okay? Very case. So I want to talk to you about that. Okay? And I'm not talking about leaving God, but I am talking about leaving religion. I am talking about really, uh, 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 being free from or leaving bondage, leaving darkness. Come on. Leaving control. Oh, very key. Okay. And thank you, Brother Reno. And this is something that God has been put in my spirit because we don't have intercessors. Our intercessor is one who covers you in prayer. But who's really praying for you? Okay. Very key. Who's really interceding for you? Who's interceding for your marriage? How much are you praying for your husband? How much are you praying for your wife? How much are you praying for your children? The principality of the air is out there and our children are open under this atmosphere. They're not covered because we don't cover them when we send them out. We should pray for them. You don't just pray for your children when they're young. You pray for their children until you die. You have to cover them. Okay, very key. You should, you should have anointed their houses and their doors. Come on, somebody. It's so, so we must talk about these things. So this is so important. So let me get to this. The first thing I want to talk, talk about, this, and let me go over the um, six coverings that I've been talking about. The covenant covering was one. Glory covering was two. Marriage covering was three. Blood covering was four. Favor covering was five. And parent as a covering was number six. And today I'm going to deal with the parent covering, but I'm going to talk to leadership and men. Leadership and men, Okay. So we're going to talk about some things, okay? If you're able, please write these notes down so and, and write these things down so you can have these in your spirit. The first thing I want to talk about is questions for a covering. Now, this is number 10. I've taught nine teachings on this covering, and I'm getting to the point that people have been waiting on. What about, is my pastor my covering? Is my bishop my covering? Uh, what is a covering from the local church perspective? Can you be covered by your pastor? What does that look like? Does the Bible support a Bible covering, as we say? When a man of God says to you, you are under my covering, okay? And these, these are things that we have to talk about, uh, and these are things that we have to begin to question, okay? Now, I'm going to share some things with you that were my experience, and, and one of the reasons why I am so hard on religion, I am called to be by God. My gifting in the body of Christ is apostolic. You want to remember that is the apostle, okay? First apostle, secondary uh, prophets, thirdly evangelist, fourth pastor, teacher. Some people believe it's the fivefold ministry, pastor and teacher. Some believe it's the four five ministry because pastor and teacher is one, pastor and teacher, okay? Very, very key to that, okay? Uh, but my gifting, in the, and these are giftings now. These are not an office. There's an office of a bishop and there's an office of a deacon. Those offices you can vote per, a person in and you can vote a person out. But the giftings are given by God. Okay? So the body of Christ has five giftings. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. The body of Christ, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, three of those functions or giftings were set in the local church for government. The apostle, the prophet, and the evangelist. After that, it says miracles. I mean, I'm sorry, apostle, prophets, and then teachers. Okay? And then it says miracles. Okay? So we understand. My gifting is the apostolic. We have to begin to ask questions about covering. People may say, I want you to be my covering. Apostle Jenkins, can you be my covering? What did that mean? Now, I've been talking about it. Now, I'm very hard on religion covering. This is why. Because I believe it's improper. I believe it's demonic when I try to make you under my covering and you're not submissive to God, I am not God. I don't care how well I can teach. I don't care how much revelation I have. I am not God. So when I cover you, I, I cover you above God. Your real covering is God. Your real relationship is God. 
So when I stand as proxy, as a covering, I must understand that covering, and I must understand when I make a gifting a covering. Okay? Now, we're going to deal with descriptions. We'll probably get to those later. But one of the reasons why I'm so hard, because there are more abuse under the word covering. There are more abuse under the title pastor and bishop and chief apostle and all this nonsense that we put more emphasis on titles than we do the function. I don't need you to make me respect your name when you don't respect your gift. I need to see the gift in the body of Christ. A, a, a son doesn't need the father to tell the son, you will respect me as a father, but you don't love the boy. You don't love the girl. You don't spend time with them. You don't pour into them. Come on. You don't support them. You don't protect them. But you have the right to want honor to a title that the, that the function of the title is missing. The function of the title is dysfunctional. The function of the title is destructive. And the same person that want me to give honor to this title. And I know certain preachers say you give honor to the position regardless of the man. No, I will not give honor to the false position. The position of a shepherd or a position of a covering comes from God. And that's what I give honor. But anytime you come out in your behavior, out of that covering, I'm not disrespecting the position of God. I'm, I am not honoring or, or, or submitting myself over to abuse. God never called me to submit to abuse under the name of a title. Never. And this is why the truth of the matter is the Lord is my shepherd. Okay? And so I teach this now. Because of abuse, does that mean that the purpose of the giftings or the covering in the body of Christ, does that mean that they don't have any significance or value? No, it means that they should have meaning and substance and value. But what gives the title value is not the title itself. It's the function that gives the title power. See? So having a baby don't make you a mama. And having a son, and the seed coming out, don't make you a father. And standing in the pulpit don't make you an apostle. Having a collar around your neck and a robe on you don't make you a man of God. And you're not going to make me respect the form when I see no flow. This is so important. So we have to ask questions. And we have to, and for, for us who have been called with this high calling on our life, God, uh, for the Holy Ghost. And, and let me say this. This is why the bank will repossess their car. Because your behavior did not match the credibility. If I can go to the bank and try to get a loan, they're going to check my credit, the Jenkins credit, Robert Jenkins. And if I'm not faithful to what I said, if I'm not faithful to my agreement, come on somebody, that's called a contract. The contract is from man. A covenant is from God. Don't tell me that the covenant, that the contract has more terms than the, than the covenant. No, God has a covenant with us and we're responsible to walk accordingly. This is why all through the Bible, it tells us how we should walk and be holy as I am holy. I have a responsibility. So I cannot throw away the covering that I should be as an apostle, as a prophet, as a pastor, as a pastor teacher. But at the same time, I cannot abuse the title and make you be submissive or to indoctrine you that you should be obedient to abuse. And we have spiritual abuse in church from covering. Many women have lost their husband to the abuse of a pastor's authority. We use pastoral authority out of order, making things mandatory. Many coverings try to operate out of the authority of the position and not out of the influence of the position. Leadership comes from two types. There is authority in the position and there is an influence in the position. But the authority that God gives us in this covering was for demons. It was for sickness. I give you authority. Come on. Come on, Ecclesia. I give you authority to do what? To lay hands on the sick 
That's when you use your authority and they shall recover. I give you authority against every unclean spirit to cast out demons. That's your authority. But God never has given man authority to rule another man. Never. He said, I give them dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over everything that creeps upon earth. But he never gave them dominion over one another. And I know you want to go to uh, Genesis chapter 3, when the Bible says, and he shall have rule over you. That rule over you from the man was not to be abusive. But what God did, he replaced it, Adam, as being the covering for Eve because the covering was broken due to their sin. Prior to the fall, he said to them, be fruitful. But once they sinned, he did not leave the woman without a covering. So he said, your desire shall be to your husband and he shall rule over you. Not rule as a control, but rule as that's where your covering will come from. And he is now to love you like Christ loved the church. And the real rule for a woman is not a man's authority. It is his authority to love love her as Christ has loved the church. And when that love is there, she will submit to that rule. Talk to me, somebody. But the abuse of apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers have hurt us as the body of Christ. And now we're trying to make people come under the covering. But if you were loving them the way they should be loved and protecting them the way they should be protected and providing the way they should be provided for, then people would run to the house of God and thank God for the covering that is over them because they would see the benefit of a proper and healthy cover, uh, covering, okay? Are you with me? Now, this is something that I could talk about forever. I've been experiencing it. I know pastors that use people. They use your gift, prostitution from, from other preachers. They'll let you pray on Wednesdays, but you can but you can speak once a year. There's a word in you, but this so-called covering is smothering. Smothering. Come on. I'm gonna talk today. We're gonna get here. I need some time. We're gonna spend a lot of time today, okay? And, and listen, I don't need you to smother me under the name of covering. That you only allowed me to do what you don't want to do. You don't want to come on time on Wednesdays and Fridays. So you got me praying. Uh-oh. And that's the only thing. And that's to tickle my ears to make me feel like that one day I'll be used because at least I can pray. I'm not called to pray. And you're not the only apostle. You're not the only prophet. And you're not the only evangelist. And you're not the only pastor and teacher. And I'm not just called to pray for Wednesdays. Come on. I'm not just called to keep coming to ministerial meetings and, and, and all this stuff and I'm, you're training me and training me but I've never been released and the only time you release me when you got when you have an engagement outside to preach now you're gonna let me preach come on somebody no this is false covering and I'm gonna talk about this and, I, and I'm gonna hit a lot of people upside the head because a lot of us are guilty of spiritual abuse from leadership and controlling people okay very key so let me ask some questions I'm on the floor in the anointing I may spend an hour on one topic, okay? And I can go down through the list. From musicians, we have ruined, we have ruined, we have ruined musicians. We have ruined musicians. And now you can't even find a musician in church that prays, that plays for the love because we have ruined them. All kind of stuff. And it goes on from marriages, from children. It's just disgusting, okay, of this. But we must ask a question. This is the question that we must ask for covering. And I want you to start studying and getting in that Bible and then getting on your face. How long are you going to sit under a false covering that's ruining your life, that you never maximize your singlehood in God? You never maximize uh -oh, uh, your full potential in God. Okay, I'm so tired of churches that are full of women that never become who they need to become, men that never become who they need to become. I'm so tired of the foolishness that goes on and supposed to be the house of God. Okay, and, and, and this is due, and this is same with, 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 with church, same thing with fathers. I'm so tired of men having babies and don't know who they are as a father, as a husband. We lack teaching, we lack understanding, and it's become destructive to us. Okay? You're right, intimidation. Okay? First question you must ask every covering. And I'm, and I'm telling you, and listen, 
And, and, and I'm, I'm free, so I don't really care. I'm at, I mean, God has freed me to the point that he allowed me not to care of people who get mad and get offended when we tell the truth. You sitting in a place that brings death to you, get out. I'm telling you, get out of religion and get into the kingdom. Get out of the church. If I'm dealing with church as religion, if you are part of a church that is part of religion and it does not bring healthiness to you or your family or your marriage, I'm telling you to get out. Get into the kingdom. Spend time with God. If you're supposed to be at that place, God will bring you back. But you need to be healed. And we need deliverance. Okay? Question we ask. Who have you seen? This is what you ask every covering. If you're about to get married, you ask your husband this. If you're about to get married to a woman, you, you ask, and I hope, listen, we got to be done with that. Same-sex marriage, all that nonsense too. Watch this. Any covering, whether it's male or female, whether it's pastor, shepherd, sheep, whatever, regardless of what it is, who have you seen when you saw me? I want to teach today. Who have you seen when you saw me? You cannot cover what you cannot see. Who have you seen? When Adam saw Eve, he already knew who she was. She's now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. How did you know that, Adam? I thought you was asleep. In the subconscious, in the spirit of a man, in the spirit of a woman, whoever you're connected to, there is a spiritual connection because y'all were connected before y'all met one another. Whenever you meet a covenant friend, whenever you meet a covenant covering, there is a spiritual connection. And you will say things like this. I think I know you. I feel like I've been knowing you all my life. There is agreement in my spirit with you because God has chosen the covenant before we were born. We met before we met. This is why God speaks to Adam and Eve before they meet in the physical. They don't meet in the physical until after uh, God puts Adam to sleep and he pulls Eve out of the rib of Adam. But he had already spoken to them. We know this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let us make man in our image. Verse 27. So God made man in his own image, made him, made him them, male and female. And he said unto them, he said unto them, be fruitful. They heard in their spirit how they should work together. When I met my wife, the first time I met my wife, I remember her telling me what she already knew about me. What God had already showed her about me. Come on, somebody. This You can't cover what you have not saw. You have to already see her. She has to already see you. Come on. And this helps them stay faithful because how are you going to leave somebody that God showed you that person? When you leave in them, you're leaving what God put in your spirit. Marriage is not about you being happy every day. It's about you fulfilling the assignment that God has put in your spirit. You've been assigned to this woman. You've been assigned to this man. Come on, somebody. We must know this. He said, I've given you dominion, both of them. To have fish in the sea. And he said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish. How are you sitting under a covering that don't know who you are? Because whatever you cannot identify, whatever you do not understand, you will abuse. You will abuse. I have many things in my house that my wife may not understand to the fullness. There are many things that I used to go in the garage and I would think I could throw this away. And she would say, you can't throw that away. Do you know what that is? I don't know what it is, baby. To me, it looked like something just collecting junk. But she has to let me know to identify it or I will abuse it. I will throw it away. I'll put it in the closet. Put something on top of it. Destroy it. Because I don't, I have not identified what it is. Well, we do this to objects. We do this to things. But we also do this to people. And so you're sitting under covering and we have the nerve to say you need to join the church, but you haven't saw me. Don't have me write my name on the roll and you don't know who I am because you're not going to do anything with me. You're not going to speak to me. And I have specific problems and you can't expect for me to get feel from what I need just on what you're preaching on Sunday mornings. 
See? And you ain't supposed to know me by my flesh. You ain't supposed to know me because I got long hair, or that's the one that got a gray weave, or that's the one that's tall, or that's the one that played ball. You should know me by the spirit. Every joint supply. How can I supply under a place that's supposed to cover me when they don't know who I am? But you're so busy preaching that you're not discerning. And you have to discern. How did the shepherd know that the one sheep was lost? He must have kept, kept count every day. He had to keep count every day to know out of a hundred, one of them left. But these coverings that we're sitting under have never seen us. And when they don't see you, they'll let you stay there dormant. So you're not growing. You become broken. Then you feel like you've been abandoned or rejected. So then you may come up with ways to be seen like a child who wants attention. And most of the time, we are, we are spiritually sitting under coverings that we're saying, hey, please see me. We're back to being like Leah. Leah wanted to be seen by her husband, so she kept laying down, making these babies, because she wanted to know, can you hear me? So I'm going to name this one Reuben. Do you see me? I'm going to name this one Simeon. Or well, vice versa, Simeon means hear, Reuben means see. I'm going to name this one Levi. And we're having all these babies in religion, hoping somebody see us. And we feel left out just like we did in school because nobody's seen us because I don't play football, so you don't know me. I don't play basketball. So children grow up feeling like mama don't see me because I don't have a natural talent. My sister can sing, but I can't. My brother plays football, but I can't. So the same thing that happens in the home or the same thing that happens in the school is the same thing that happens in church because we are under a covering. And how long are you going to sit there and know they don't see you? And when I mean see you, I don't mean just see you. I mean see who you are so they'll know what to give you and know how to feed you. You got to train a child up in the way it should go. How are you going to train it when you don't know the way? Good to see you, Marine. God bless you. I'm going to text you. Thank you for your support. We appreciate that. This is why we take up the time and we say thank you. I want you to know that I see you. I ain't calling out your name just to call out their name. Thank you, uh, Sister Rita. I'm not calling out your name just for that. I want you to know that I see you and that me and my wife, we pray for you. Many times me and my wife has been on the phone counseling people and my wife has said, that's the woman that God put on my heart. Okay, that's her. That's what a real covering does that God drops those people in your spirit. And that you begin to know them so you know how to pray for them and to pray with them and to pray them through because you saw them. You won't settle for what the devil tried to trap them. Many children are lost in the school system because the teacher didn't see who's in the school. Me and my wife was watching a movie yesterday and this about this village girl who growing up poor over in Ghana and over there in this you know in over in Africa but but there was a there was a person there who taught kids how to play chess but he recognized out of all his students that one is a little special. She 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 learned things kind of quickly. Her 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 the way she playing chess she has something special. And he began to spend time with her and empower her. And he went to her mother, who was her covering, and said, please let your daughter be a part of the chess club because your daughter has something. Come on, somebody. Somebody got to see what's in you. So we got to, and we got to quit for the sake of saving church. We don't want to talk about the things that's wrong with church for the sake of saving religion. No, you're dying there. You heard it from Apostle Jenkins. You're dying there. You, they don't see you. And you got great giftings that could have been awesome in the body of Christ. But because they was under a covering, because that's when mama took them to that church. I don't care if mama go to the church, and sometimes family churches are the worst. You got to be careful on these family churches. They only see their cousin. I'm going to get to it today. We're going to spend some time today. Okay, very key, very key, very key. Who did they see? You got to ask this question, pastor. I love you. I respect you. Who did God tell you I am? Who, who am I? How long should I be here? Am I trapped at this church for the rest of my life? Am I here for a season? Do I have a ministry in me? 
Is there a calling that you're supposed to water? Where is my weaknesses and where are my strength? How long should I tarry with you? Am I a Sunday school teacher for the rest of my life? Do I ever get a chance to graduate? I know I'm an apple on this tree. But is there a tree in me? Do you see it? What do you see? I don't want you to tell me all the negatives because we we so good to see. Oh, we can see you're having sex. I can see you need to work on your lust. Can you see I'm a king? Can you see I'm a queen? Can you see that my ministry is going to look bigger than yours and you are, are supposed to support me to be bigger than you? Did, did you see that you're supposed to train me to take your place? Do you see me as your successor? Because every great leader, we train people to take our place. You got to leave mother and father and cleave to their wife. I ain't going to stay with you forever. These are the questions that you must ask covering. Now, I took nine, nine texts, nine teachings to deal with the, the spiritual side. Now, we're going to move into the natural side. Okay? You got to ask that question. That's the first question. Who has you seen when you saw me? Can you see a Paul and a Saul? Can you see a Peter and a Simon? Can you see an Abraham and an Abram? The next question you got to ask him, who do you see in me? Who do you see in me? Watch this. Do you see other soul ties in me that are holding me down, that are not allowing my thinking to be free? Who in me? Is mama in me that I can't be me because of mama? I can't be me because of daddy. Who do you see in me? Is my ex-husband still in me? Is my ex-wife still in me? Am I still a child at the age of 45 that the child is still in me? I have not grown. I have not matured. Because you're responsible if you're going to be a covering to understand who I am and who's hindering me from being who I need to be. Oh, that's nonsense for the person who says, they said, they said, I wouldn't call this a pastor. The pastor does not pronounce your calling. Callings come from within. That's nonsense when they try to make sure. And I understand because people are trying to, everybody want to say they call. So I understand the level of protection that a lot of times we're trying to have. A lot of times we're trying to have. Because if somebody does it, and we'll deal with the purpose of laying on the hands, a form of covering. So you understand. I want you to understand the intent. The original intent should be to protect the office or the giftings so that everybody can say they call. But at the end of the day, I must pray that the Holy Ghost reveals to you, I cannot take the position of authority and become the God in your life. I should pray with you and say to you, I want to pray and I want to be in agreement of what you believe in God is. And then as a covering, I should say, this is what God has revealed to me based upon biblical understanding of what a preacher is. Does this sound like what God called you to? Because I should help you. See, so a lot of times uh, abuse covering came in. It wanted to protect us, but it didn't know how to protect us. So it said, don't do it unless I tell you. Because a lot of counterfeits are saying they're called to preach. How do we stop the counterfeits? We got to get on our face and pray for the atmosphere. Because when the atmosphere is where it needs to be, it will reveal the counterfeits. See? This is real talk. At the same time, we got to be careful in defending that we don't take the authority. We, we, must, we must teach people and we must lead people from the influence of love and truth and grace and not authority that becomes abusive. Because there's a lot of things that we could be trying to do from the level of protection, but become controlling trying to protect. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So what do you see in me? The next question we have to ask is, do you love me? We're dealing with coverings now because you can't cover what you, don't love, what you don't love. 
And you can't love what you don't see. So you have to see it. Before God brought Eve out of Adam for him to see it, God checked to see if he could see. If he can't see, he won't see her. So he said, it's not good for man to be alone. The next thing he says is go name the animals and let me see what you name them. Let me see if you name them by their calling or their nature. I'm going to see if you call a monkey a gorilla. And he watched how he named them. And in naming, he noticed that every one of them had a mate. What did I tell you before? That covering deals with that. Covering comes with, what I tell you? A mission. I told you that, right? It comes with a mission. It comes with a mate. Remember that? Go back over your notes. You must understand that. Okay? Very key. If you can't see, how you cover who you can't see? If they don't see you, they're not going to empower you. If they don't see you, they're not going to love you. If they don't see you, they're not going to develop you. This is false covering. We can't keep sitting people under blind leadership. They're blind. So they're blind to what they should tell you. They're blind to who you are. They're blind to their purpose. They're blind. And the blind can't lead the blind. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Brother Smith. Do you love me? Jesus challenged Peter before he go back to leadership. Peter had quit preaching, went back to working. He quit the ministry and got him a job. When he went back to a job, he couldn't catch nothing. He back there fishing. That's what he was doing all his life. All of a sudden now, he, he denies Christ three times, go back fishing, he out here toiling all night. Jesus and died, rose again, shows up. He said, let your nets down on the right side. Peter thinking, I know how to fish now. He let down one net instead of many nets. He wasn't total obedient to God. When he let down the net on the right side, the net broke. He'd been toiling all night to catch nothing because he was out of order. But Jesus just did not just bring him back into the ministry. He said, I got to make sure that you understand your position as a covering. Because you just can't go back to preaching. Do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Because if you don't love me with all your heart, you can't love the people. See? Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And the second is like it to the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. But we got preachers in the pulpit that want to cover us, but they don't have love for us. And I'm not trying to put them down. I'm putting down the doctrines of the demons that think it's okay for men to stand in these positions without the right covering. Because if they stand in these positions, they are standing in a position that will hurt the people that's sitting under them. Come on, somebody. That wouldn't be love if I didn't tell you the truth about you have to be careful of the accountability that you give to blind leaders. There are many people who are messed up because blind leaders prophesied something to them, never came to pass. They're wondering what's going on, God. You said this was going to never happen according to the prophet, but it really wasn't under God's divine uh, uh, inspiration. And so now we got this thing that it seems like people are hating on the church. We got to hate on anything that's killing God's people. Come on, somebody. Do you love me? If you love me, then you can feed me. If you don't love them, you can't feed them. If you love them, you, if you don't love them, you can't lead them. Write that down. If you don't love them, you can't feed them. If you don't love them, you can't lead them. Come on, somebody. These are the questions that we ask covering when we deal with the local church. When we deal with that, we must ask these questions. And even in marriage, okay? This is why being spiritual, being saved and sanctified, is hard sometimes to work a job. Because your boss don't care about you. Your boss don't have any concern or honor towards your mission and why you're there. This is why the Bible says, and I'll get to it maybe next week, when you go to work, it talks about masters and slaves. It says work as if you're working unto God. Because you're covering when you're at work most of the time is a demonic covering. Sometimes we'll work for witches and warlocks. 
We work for people who are tied into pornography. We work for people who are who are dishonoring their own marriage. But we have to work as if we're working unto God because that is our covering. They don't love us. And so they'll do things that won't be beneficial to who you are and cause your family to be in jeopardy because there's no real honor for who you are. But they over you in a sense of being your manager or your superior or your supervisor. Okay? Very key. Now, we're going to walk heavy. Stay with me. We, we ain't gonna be, we're going to be over our way today. So please make time for this. Okay? If you have not hit that share button, share it. Second Samuel chapter 11. I'm doing a whole lot of teaching today. Second Samuel. It's Friday. When you was in the world, you party all night long. Don't tell me you can't listen to this word. Second Samuel chapter 11. Let me give you some let me give you some revelation on numbers. Because there's a reason why I'm dealing with chapter 11 of 2 Samuel. <clears throat> one, number one is God. Two represents witness. This is just some of, some of the symbolisms of numbers. One, God. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. Two, witness. Go out in twos. Three, the Trinity. These three are one, but these three is Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Faith, hope, and love. And we can go on and on. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? We can go on and on and on about these three. Death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? These three. Trinity. Four. Change. Four corners of the earth. Four winds. Change. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. First four books of the New Testament. Fifth book of Acts. Change. Change. Shift. Five. Grace. Fivefold ministry, the hands of God, the fivefold ministry, the grace of God. The book of Acts brings in the, the, the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is what? Grace. Five. Six is the day that God made man. Seven, okay, deals with completion of creation. Completion of creation on the seventh day. Okay? He completed all that he made. So he rests on the seventh day, the day of rest. Seven, completion. When something is completed, you can rest from the work, rest from the labor. So it's the rest day. Eight means new beginning. Seven is complete, so eight is a new beginning. We start over. Eight, nine is birthing, okay? Nine months usually to a baby, then a baby is birthed. You have nine fruits of the Spirit. Fruit is a sign that something has been birthed. Nine gifts of the Spirit, nine. Nine is the only number that times itself is nine. So nine times one is nine. Nine times two is 18. One and eight is nine. Nine times three is 27. Two and seven is nine. Nine times four is 36. Three and six is nine. Nine times five is 54. Five and four is nine. Okay, are you getting it? Nine times seven is 63. Six and three is nine. Nine times eight is 72. Seven and two is nine. Nine times nine is 81. Eight and one is nine. It is a sign of birthing. Once you have a new beginning, you move into your nine and you birth something from the new beginning, from being complete, from being a man, from knowing God's grace, from knowing change, from knowing the Trinity, from knowing how to witness, from knowing one God. Okay? Nine. From the level of nine, you go to ten, which is really at another level. Ten. Are you talking to me? Okay? Listen to me because I'm giving out information. Ten is at another level. So ten means you're responsible. You're responsible for the new birth. You're responsible for the gift that God has given you. You're responsible for the fruit of the Spirit because you have nine. You've given birth to something. So nine. So there's five fingers and five on each hand. Ten means responsible in your hand. Your feet, five toes, five toes. You're responsible for where you walk. That's five. Now, I'm going to skip number 11 and go to 12. I'm going to come back to 11. 12 is apostolic. It means completion, the fullness of Jesus. Apostolic. The fullness of Christ. So you have 12 uh, Old Testament, 12 tribes of Israel, New Testament, 12 apostles, 12 months in a year, government, and the government shall be upon it, his shoulder, the fullness of Christ, apostolic. Now, most people go from 10 to 12 in their mind.
Daniel in their conversation because they don't understand leaven. Leaven is a number that the devil has stole from us and make us feel that it's unlucky. Leaven is an unlucky number. One of the greatest things that happened in America was 9-11. It was 11, uh oh, and 9 is birthing, 9-11. But 11 is the only number out of 1 through 12 that looks at itself. It's one against one. It is the place in God that once you have moved, you understand God, one, two, witness, three, trinity, four, chains, five, grace, six, man, seven, completion, eight, new beginning, nine, birthing, ten, responsible. Now that you know that, you must face yourself and be honest with yourself or you're never moving to an apostolic understanding or an apostolic flow of the spirit. Most people don't want to deal with the eleven. They want to be responsible, they want to be apostolic, but they've never been honest with themselves. They never dealt with the one-on-one. -on -one. So we have to deal with leaven. Leaven is the most hardest part before you move into apostolic flow or apostolic understanding. Why is leaven so hard? Because you got to be honest with you. You can't lie to you. You know you lying. You know you stubborn. You know you selfish. You know this. You got to face yourself. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, we finally see what David has to face himself as a man of God, but he does not operate under proper covering. He is not dealt with. His daddy left him some things that he has never dealt with. He comes from a very dysfunctional home, but we don't know it until the 11th chapter of 2 Samuel. All up to this point, it seems like David is a wonderful man. He kills uh, the lion and the bear. He cuts off off the head of Goliath. Oh, he's a man after God's own heart. But there's an 11th chapter in every one of our lives. In order for us to real have real apostolic covering, you must deal with yourself. Most leaders won't want to deal with the 11th chapter of their life. This is where you find out that they got some problems. They have some proclivities. They have some issues. They don't have the right covering, but they still want to be responsible, give birth. They still want to act like they're apostolic, but they have never dealt with their own issues. No. Oh. That's it. Thank you, baby. So important. So we're in the 11th chapter. Are we there? Watch this. Give me time today. We're going to talk. I need your time. Hit that share button and start tagging people because it's about to get good. Okay? You've been praying for this understanding. Here it is. And it came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab. Some theologian says he shouldn't have went to battle. Some theologian says he shouldn't have. David was a man of war, but he's at the top of his game. And right now, he refuses or he decides it decides not to go to battle. I believe one of the first problems that we find out in false coverings is when you have been called to do something that you think you no longer have to do since your church has grown. David was a warrior. David was a killer. David was known for fighting. Now there's a battle, but the king want to stay home. And whatever leadership are not fighting the fight you're called to fight. When you have gotten so comfortable with the Mercedes, with the houses, and people may say, why you pick on houses and Mercedes a lot? Because that's what we have advertised as a sign of blessings. Oh, everybody loves the preachers, preachers of LA, and they want to show the first tunes that come on is materialistic. It's supposed to be the preachers of L.A., but it's showing how big houses they have, the cars they have. We, You don't know if you're looking at a preacher or looking at P, P. Diddy. Come on, somebody, because we're getting caught up in this thing. But these preachers have a calling on their life, but you're not battling anymore. You're not dealing with the spirit that's knocking at your door because you're comfortable. This is what happens to coverings, and this is what happened to David. All of a sudden now, David is not going to battle. Foolishness, you got it right. Foolishness. David, don't go to battle. And man of God, if you're listening, I want you to hear this in love. 
You better get back to fight. I don't care how well your church is growing. I don't care how many cars you have. I don't care how many degrees you have. You got to fight against lust. You got to fight against temptation. You got to fight against uh, anger and jealousy. You got to fight like everybody else. Apostle Paul had more revelation than us all. He spoke in tongues more than us all. But he said, I must die daily that Christ may live. There must be some battles. And whenever you're so comfortable and you're so rich and you're so blessed and you're so knowledgeable that you no longer go to battle, you are now going to disqualify yourself to be covered and to be able to cover others because it shows a mentality. David took on a mentality that he don't have to fight. And you better be careful when you're sitting under coverings that's not willing to fight. If they're not going to fight their own demons, you know they're not going to fight yours. If they're not going to fight their own thing, they're not at their door. You know they're not going to fight the demons that deal with you. And this and egotistical men have allowed this spirit to come in and we got eagles that don't want to pray. I'm talking to you, man of God. I'm talking to you, woman of God. You don't want to show up for praise and worship. You want to come in an hour after service has already started. And now you want to restart service over. No, you don't want to pray. You don't clap your hands. I know some preachers, they so deep, they cross their legs in the pulpit. All shouting can be going on. Uh, the move of God can be going on. But they so deep, they looking on the audience with their legs crossed, with their hands like they Jesus themselves. This is the devil. You need to get on your face and battle. How you going to cover me when there's no worship in your life? How you going to cover me when there's no prayer in your life? How you going to cover me when you won't fight? You see these demons walk in church. You see these principalities walk in church. And you just let them on the organ. You let them on the pulpit. You let them on the drums. You let them in the praise team. These type of coverings cause death to the marriages. Cause death to the family. Cause the sheep to scatter. Because they have the wrong mentality. And these same people, I've seen many of them. Before they became big, they would pray. All the time was anointed, was humble. You got to be careful when you become king. You no longer humble because you king. Ever since you've been called the apostle, you no longer humble. Ever since you've been called the bishop, you no longer humble. You can't fight with the rest of us. We don't know where you live. We can, you can't hang out with the rest of us. Jesus was God and, and, and still spent time with the wine bibbers. Got criticized with it. My wife said, how are you going to cover me when you sleep? <sighs> David sent Joab. Now watch this. Not only that, but these false coverings have clicks. That I'm, we're going to walk today, so stay with me, okay? There's going to be a shift today. We're going to be here for a while. They got clicks. They got other ministers that they're connected to. A lot of these false coverings, I tell you, they have a covering, but their covering is just as jacked up as they are. How your covering going to be a, a woman womanizer? How your covering going to be a homosexual? How your covering going to be a Jezebel? But they click together. I'm going to show you in the Bible. We ain't going to like this kind of teaching today. Joab was David's nephew. Joab was, 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 was David's sister's son. She had three boys. Two of them got killed. Uh, and, and Joab was a killer. He's a murderer. There were some secrets in the family. These false coverings, they got connections. They got cousins and nephews and sometimes they mama and they daddy and they and, and come on, come on somebody. They sons, they kids, false coverings or their homeboy. Come on, you better, there's a reason why that organist can do whatever he want to do and he still can play for the church because there's some agreements in their lives. There's some agreements in their secrets. Come on somebody. Now Joab, watch this. His name means father. He was supposed to be a covering as well. How your name going to mean father, but David, no, he can use you to do some wrong. 
and there's some connections. We better stop all this nonsense. This my son. Now that's your cover up. That young man that you call your son, he know you're not doing right by your wife. He know you're not doing right by the money, but he going to lie with you. Every church is sent by the devil, a Joab, to join in with the pastor to help him stay out of order. And we got this mess in the pulpit, in the mess in the ministerial staff. But they're helping you kill people. Helping you lie to people, helping you manipulate, keeping the con going. This is false covering. And David had it in his army. The leader of his army was just as crooked and just as evil as he is. And you better watch these ministrators. You better watch these secretaries. Come on, somebody. There's a reason why she's the secretary. Because she lets you flirt with her. Yeah, you can flirt with her. You can be all in her face. Y'all by yourself. Half of these princes is sleeping with them. Come on, somebody. They keep your dirt hid. Joab. David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel to destroy the children of Ammon and besiege Rohab. But David tarried and stayed in Jerusalem. He stayed at a place of peace when he should have been at a place of war. It was the time for war, but he wanted to stay home in his palace. It was the time for intercession, but they want to stay home in their air-conditioned house and their Mercedes Benz. It was the time that should have been fighting along with the people. This is false covering that don't fight with you when it's time that you need them to fight with you. Watch this. And it came to pass in the evening Tired. It's getting late now. David rose off. David rose from off his bed. He been in his bed. Everybody else fighting. And he home chilling. Everybody else trying to get a breakthrough. And he on vacation. Everybody else trying to keep their marriage together. He's somewhere enjoying that money he took from the people. Come on, somebody. False covering. He gets about his bed. Watch this. Walked upon the roof. So he's high and lifted up. Of the king's house. Watch this. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing. Now she's washing. She's supposed to be uncovered with clothes because she's washing. She's washing herself. That time they had outside, he looks over the roof. He sees this woman washing. He looks at her while she's uncovered. And while she's uncovered, he desires her. I'm going to walk it now. False coverings is people who see you uncovered and won't turn away. They see what they can take advantage of while you are uncovered. In the time of your washing, in the time of your transition, before you get a chance to be covered, before you get a chance to understand everything, before you get a chance to wash away some things from your mentality, before you get a chance to, to grow up and mature, they saw you in your nakedness and they desired you and lust after you. He saw her washing. He knew she was washing. She ain't out there for you, David. You knew they were out there, but they weren't out there for you. She's not washing to be with you. They're not trying to get clean to serve you. But when you are arrogant, self-centered, you caught up in your own preaching, your own teaching, caught up in your own revelation, caught up in how big your church is, how much money you have, caught up in how big your name is. Saul killed a thousand, David killed 10,000. So it gets you puffed up so you don't pray like you used to. You don't go to battle, but you will look at another man's wife. You won't go to battle, but you will look at another woman's, another, uh, uh, another man, another woman's husband. Come on, somebody. Stay with me because we're going to talk today. He saw the woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. So he ignored <coughs> her condition for his pleasure, for the lust of the eyes. <clears throat> Did you hear me? Watch this. David sent, now I'm going to tell you, see, watch this false covering. 
Because a lot of stuff, they lying, they lying, they lying, they lying, they lying. I didn't know. I didn't know she was vulnerable. I didn't know she liked me. I didn't, I didn't know he was like that. I didn't know. I didn't mean to take advantage. You're lying. Watch this. David sent an inquire after the woman. He, he went and, and checked on the profile. Who is she? And one said, he said, I want to know who she is. He already made up in his mind, I'm going to get her because I'm the king. I can get her because I'm the pastor. I'm going to get her because I'm the bishop in this house. I'm going to get her because I'm the chief apostle here. I'm going to get him because I, I, I'm the set woman in this house. He rolled on his authority as a king and not his influence as a servant. He sent in the choir. One said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam? The wife of Uriah, the his type. Now the information that came back to you, Pastor, Bishop, Apostle, she's married to somebody. You checked it out, so don't tell me you don't know what's going on. You knew who she belonged to. It's in the Bible. I ain't making it up. What's this? She the wife of Uriah. Her name is Bathsheba. What's this? David sent messengers, and watch how the Bible says, it, and took her. That's called authority. Not invite her, took her. In other words, the messengers made a demand. You must come to the king. Mandatory meeting. You must see the pastor. Come to his office. Now, don't be upset. I'm talking on purpose about false coverings. That's what we're dealing with today. We're dealing with problems in covering. We're dealing with pastors who are out of order. You're lusting at other women. Come on. You think because you're the king, you can call up another man's wife. You think because you're the pastor, you have a right over every woman in your church. False covering. Ooh. Watch this. He sent messages and they came and took her. She came into him. She lay and he and, and, and he laid with her. He didn't say she laid with him. Thank you, baby. He lay with her. She understood she didn't really have a choice. He's the king. That's the one of the number one things we do in false covering, you use that authority. They don't want to, they, they immature. Come on, playing games. And they end up being submissive to that authority. Now, a lot of these women know what they're doing too. We're going to talk about that later. And some of these women that came up to the king, you couldn't wait for the king to come get you. You've been wanting the king. You've been lusting. Every time the pastor comes to church without his wife, that's the time you go to shouting. You always shouting when your dress can fly up. You want them to see you. You always got something to say after service when the wife ain't there. You got to have a two-hour meeting about something he just preached about for an hour because you want to be in that pastor study with the door closed. Everybody else that left the church, the first lady ain't there, and now all of a sudden you need so much counseling today. It can't wait, Pastor. Abuse. False covering. The devil is a liar. You knew the pastor's wife wasn't going to come. You talked to the pastor on Saturday night. Find out what he wearing. Look like you the first lady. You got on blue. He got on blue. Come on. I'm exposing it all today. Yeah, he told you. He told you Saturday night. You at the you at the church morning. You at home. He told you that his wife bought him a blue suit, but she's not gonna be able to see him wear it. And you said yourself in your mind, "Oh, you're wearing blue tomorrow, huh, Pastor?" You didn't say that to yourself. It's so it's just a coincidence that the pastor come in with a blue suit and you got one just like it. Come on, come on. Watch this. Took that woman. Lay with that woman, knowing who that woman belonged to. Pastors, stop it. I'm telling you, God will expose. He's exposing. Stop it. And I can deal with all level of intimacy. 
you all in their eyes. You ain't got no business being in another woman's face. False covering. Watch this. And when she was purified from her uncleanness, she returned unto her house. Watch this. In other words, she washed again. <clears throat> Get the residue off where she been. Then she go home. Like nothing happened. David, the king on the rooftop, they slept with somebody else. She was down low. He was up high. He took advantage of her condition. Took advantage of her position. Watch this. Then sent her home. I know pastors who slept with women and then after two years don't want to be bothered with the secretary no more. Don't want to be bothered with the, the, the woman over the children's ministry. Then go back to their wife like nothing never happened. Like it never happened. And sometimes this stuff doesn't get exposed until the girlfriend or the mistress says, you ain't going to just drop me for two years and then go back to your wife like you was never with me. I've been in churches where, 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 where the, the choir was going out of town with the pastor to preach and the pastor would get off the bus to be at a hotel. He going to meet us back the next day and women would get off the bus with the pastor and go to the same hotel. And the pastor wife be on the bus. Everybody looking at the pastor wife like, are you going to let that woman walk off with your husband? See, we don't like this kind of preaching. False covering. If he mistreats his first lady, if he mistreats, and you got to stop that first lady stuff too. She should be the only lady. If there's a first, there's a second. There's a third, there's a fourth. She should be the only. False covering. You call him the first because you want to be the second. Come on. And the woman conceived. Now check this out. Now she's pregnant. We spent the time today. She get pregnant by David. Watch this. Watch this. And sent and told David and said, I am with child. So I don't know. What it, I don't know if they had pregnancy tests. I don't know how she know. I don't know how long did it went. Because I don't know if they had, you know, you can, you can, you can find out on the same day now. But this ain't 2018. This is the Old Testament. So some time may have, may have went, went past. Watch this. She said, I'm pregnant. Watch this. Here David said, his nephew clicks. Here we got armor bearers in the church. You're not an armor bearer. You just want to hang with the pastor so he can hide his dirt through you. Come on. Man, we got to kill this stuff. I'm the armor bearer. You got 12 members and nine of them are armor bearers? Ain't nobody carrying no weapons. You 50 years old, you need somebody to carry your Bible? You 45 years old, you need somebody to carry your briefcase that you don't even use when you're preaching? See, we gonna, I'm, I'm going to get to that too. David said, Joy, you got boys, you got cliques. Watch this. David sent Joab saying, send me Uriah. Now you're going to ask for the man's husband, the woman's husband, when you done just slept with her. That happens. you be surprised of the pastors that's trying to get close. They'll keep the women that they're messing with, they'll keep their husbands close to them so they can identify where to make their move. And a lot of times they're only doing that so they can stay with your wife. And I know this sounds terrible, but this goes on in the house of God. This goes on. This is how we had situations like we had in Atlanta with the gay situations and different churches and pastors. And, they, and these wives are on YouTube saying, my husband cheated. Pastors having babies while they're married, while they're pastoring. Largest churches in the city. Fastest growing young church in the city. Yeah, it's also the fastest growing babies outside the marriage in ministry. This is not a covering. And this hurts the true covering, the true callings, the true giftings. David sent Joab saying, send me Uriah to Hittite. And, and Joab sent Uriah to David. When, you, when Uriah was coming to him, David demanded of him how Joab did. And how the people did and how 
uh, the war prosper. In other words, David is trying to uh, uh, con and manipulate uh, Bathsheba husband. So this is what David said. How did, the, how did the battle go? Y'all heard y'all killed him. Ooh, y'all did good. Hey, this is what we do. Oh, here you go, leaders. Oh, I heard your wife cook some mean mashed potatoes. Ooh, how you doing on your job? I heard you getting a promotion. Oh, hear, hear all this nonsense. Acting like they like you. Acting like you're doing well. I heard you did so well. Ooh, I heard you're doing well. I heard things are going well for you. Man, I heard can't nobody fix cars like you can. Man, I'm telling you, man, I see something on you. Yeah, you see something on me, all right? You see that I'm weak enough to let you be with my wife. You see that I'm weak enough that I'll stay so loyal to you that I won't even know what's going on in my home. That's what you see. You see I'm so vulnerable, I'll give 80% of my money to the ministry. That's what you see, but you're acting like something else. David did it in the Bible. I know the man after God's own heart. Here he is. How was the war? How did the leader do? I heard y'all prosper. Y'all killed him. Ooh, I heard you get in the house. I heard y'all planning on moving. Man, I'm so proud of you. All this flattery to see where you are. All this flattery. Ooh. Ooh, I can feel the weight of this, this rebuke myself. God, and watch this. Oh. <laughs> um. David said to Uriah, go down to that house, wash your feet. Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there he followed him, a mess of meat from the king's house. Now David sent in all kind of food to the house. Go to your house, wash your feet, sit down, and I'm going I'm to I'm 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 feed you. I'm going to send you a lot of food. Go home, because I'm hoping that you make love to your wife when you get there. You did so well. You got a you got a compliment from the pastor. The pastor said you're doing good. I'm gonna take you out to dinner. I'm gonna pay for your meal. Let me bless you. Let me bless you, man. I just been with your wife, but let me bless you. I got your wife attention. I got a heart. I got a mind. But let me bless you. And it goes for women pastors too. You do it to men too. Looking at the woman in her face and knowing you got a husband, got her under, got him under your thumb. Come on. Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of the Lord and went down and went not down to his own house. The man just came out of battle. He's so loyal to the pastor. He's so loyal to David. He's so loyal to the king. He won't even go home and spend time with his wife. This is what false covering do. They train you to be so loyal. They train you to be so committed that you become blind in your commitment. You become blind in your commitment. You become blind in your loyalty. So David don't even go home. He's staying with the king. I'm going to stay at the church. I'm, 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 I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm with the pastor. Don't even spend time with your own husband. Spend more time with the church than you do your own husband. The children are jealous of your ministry. Your husband despises the ministry. Talk to me, somebody. I ain't making it up. It's in the Bible. Watch this. And when David, and when they told David, saying, Uriah went not down to his house. Here you got your friends. You got your pulpit, uh, 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 your pulpit talent tellers. You got your secret agent, your FBI. Say, you know he didn't do it. Your trick didn't work. He didn't even go home. Weak men serve wicked men. Weak men serve wicked men. You show me a, a, a wicked leader, and I'm telling you, there's weak men. Because weak wickedness can only prevail where there is weakness. Jelly bag men letting this stuff go on. A real apostle, a real prophet will come to that church and say, is you. You are out of order. At these real revivals, if you got a real speaker, they would say this house is out of order, starting with the headship. How are you going to correct the body and don't correct the head? My toe better never hit that wall without my mind telling it. I better never go to my driveway and my car decide to pull out on his own. Headship is out of order. But everybody want to beat up the body and never deal with leadership.
And you're right, it does cause chaos between babies. Babies see this kind of stuff. Went down. He didn't go home. David said to Uriah, can thou not from this journey? Why did not now go down to your house? Here, 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 David. Look here, man. You've been fighting. Why didn't you go home? Why didn't you go home? David don't want him to go home for the right reasons. David don't want him to go home for the right reasons. David want him to go home so he can sleep with his wife. And so David can say, that's your baby and not mine. Trying to pass on the seed. Trying to pass on the responsibility of the seed. Trying to pass on the responsibility. Uriah said to David, the ark in Israel and Judah abides in tents. And my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are a camp in the open field. Then I shall then I go to my house. In other words, what's in battle? We got the Ark of the Covenant out there. We got your lead soldier out there. How about go home and act like everything's fine when they battle? Now, look at Uriah got the mindset of a pastor. He got the mindset of a covering. He got more of a covering. Come on. How do you want me to go home and act like things are fine when battle's going on? The worship is in jeopardy. The Ark of the Covenant is in jeopardy. God's people are in jeopardy. Ooh. He said, you want me to go home to my house to eat and drink and lie with my wife when this is a time for battle? As thou liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. Uh-oh. Now he's standing up. Now watch this. This jellyback man is standing up for the honor of of. of Covering, but not the honor for his marriage. It's amazing that you see strength in the wrong positions. Now you're saying you're not going to come. That's how you should be feeling about God and your marriage and the glory. Woo! So David says to Uriah, give me time. I know we walk a little heavy today. Tarry you here today also and tomorrow. Stay with me two days and I will let thee depart. So Uriah bored in Jerusalem that day and tomorrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. Now David getting him drunk. Leadership getting him drunk. We're drunk on, 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 on image from the pastor. You got drunk on his robe, drunk on his charismatic ways, drunk on his charisma, drunk on how much he can do and how well he can speak. You got him drunk. False leadership gets you intoxicated to get you to do the wrong things. Ooh, watch this. So Uriah bored in Jerusalem that day and tomorrow. David called him, got him drunk. Even when he was out, lying on his bed with his servants of the Lord, he went now to his house. He drunk and he still won't go home. We have to deal with men who knew you was a part of the, of the false covering and you never said nothing. These are the Joabs in the Bible. Abba, Father. Ab, A-B means Father. He was a covering, but his covering was temperated because he was connected to a family covering, David, and he had the same uh, wrong mindset that David had. And he helped in killing this man. And there are many leaders that you help in, help in breaking up that marriage. You was, a, you was a accessory to the crime and having that leadership. You know that man was with that secretary. You knew it, but you didn't speak up. You knew it, organ player. You knew it, drummer. You knew it, praise and worship leader. You knew it, choir leader. You knew it, administrator. How many people have been hurt in church? They told you not to talk to them. You watched them die. You watched the pastor steal their passion, kill their, kill their potential because you had honor to a false covering. You had honor to a false covering. You had honor to a false covering. And you got to repent for being loyal to death. Loyal. Loyal. I'm speaking to you. Watch this. And it came to pass in the morning, David, watch this. He wouldn't go home. He couldn't get him to go home. So David, watch this. David wrote a letter to his nephew, the leading guy in the army. We're going to kill this guy. There are some people 
that are under false covering. And I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost that the design of that pastor is to kill you because he can't get away with the sin he has committed in your life. So he's going to destroy your credibility. He's going to make sure nobody try to hear you preach. Nobody hear you teach. He's going to kill your credibility. He don't want nobody to, to uh, uh, believe in your calling as a psalmist or as a worshiper. I'm telling you, because of his own sins and because of, of, because of who you are and you, you are a threat to the ministry, if you know the truth and begin to stand up for the truth, you will shout that church down so they got to kill you because of what you know and what has happened in your own marriage in your own family to your own children will wake people eyes up so they are out to destroy anything that gives your voice any type of value and David wrote this letter David wrote this letter came to pass in the morning David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah and said look here nephew we going to kill this guy. Watch this. I ain't making it up. He wrote in a letter saying, set Uriah in the front line of the, of the hottest battle and retrieve you, retrieve you from him that he may be smitten and die. Put him in the hottest battle and right when it's time, don't cover him. Back away. There have been leaders false covering that has told other people to back away from you. Let you die when you gave your first sermon. Don't support you when you sing it. Don't support you when you start your business. Don't be there for you when you're in your worst times of your life. You lost loved ones. Things went home. You lost your job. Don't support her. Don't encourage her. There are spiritual letters that are being written purposely to let you die in battle alone. And you thought you died because you were fighting for the church. You were fighting for God. You were fighting for the ministry. No, they set you up. They set you up when they gave you that Bible study. They purposely gave you a Bible study, and then they're going to criticize everything you do. And ever since you taught that lesson, you don't believe you're called to teach. You don't believe you're called. Ever since you tried to do that ministry, they set you up because you are a threat to what is going on in this false covering. If the people would tell the church, many people will not go to church. This is why the news has exposed more people. You better believe these preachers who've been getting high and get and die in a hotel. You better believe somebody knew they was buying drugs. Somebody knew they was getting high. Somebody noticed it. Somebody smelt liquor on their breath. Somebody noticed how the way he been looking at them little boys. You can tell me nobody saw you looking at them little boys like that. Nobody saw that controlling spirit that she runs her marriage. So she going to run the church. But we let it go. We turn ahead. We part of it. We joke. We want. You know why? Because we over the army. Because we over the praise team. He got a position, so he wants to keep his position, so he covers David's sins. He covered David's mess, because I'm over the army. I'm the praise leader. He let me preach more, so I don't say nothing. I'm the only one that he'll let me lead the church to, so I'm quiet. Oh, we talking today. Watch this. Thank you, Brother James. Appreciate your testimony. Watch this. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city, he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that violent men were. You got people that will put you in a hot situation to kill you. This is false covering. Get out, get out, get out. There's a movie that went so big and it was called Get Out. And they were trying to tell this guy that they're cutting off people's head and they're switching their mind and they're taking the young people's head and giving it to the old people and that's the new church. And the new church is cutting off the minds and taking everything from you and giving it to the people who, who have no honor and respect for it. And the name of the movie is Get Out. And the one friend called the guy and I said, I told you not to go. Get out. If you know by the Spirit of God that God has laid this message on your heart by the Holy Ghost and you feel the agreement, I'm telling you, it is really God's voice. Get out. 
And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. And I'm going to stop there. False covering can lead to death. Can lead to death. I'm not telling you to leave God. And some of you, you'll hear this message and you'll stop praying. You better not stop praying. It's sad that you have to be religious to pray. You got to be part of an organization to study. We study to show ourselves unto God. We don't study to know. We study to show. I didn't tell you to leave God. I tell you to leave your purpose. I told you to leave any form of blindness and bondage. That's bringing death. And I don't care what you say. Once God has revealed to you. They don't love you. They don't see what's in you. They're not empowering you. They're not lifting you. You're going to die. Anything that don't, don't grow. Die. Or it's artificial. Artificial plants don't grow, grow. That's a beautiful plant behind me. I love it. But it'll never grow. And that's why I never have to water it. I have no accountability or responsibility for it because it's fake. But it's beautiful. Do not be the fake ornament at churches that they treat you as if you need no water. Just because you make the place look good. But you get nothing from the place. I have to do nothing to that plant. But it does a lot for my scenery. Are you just an ornament in the church? Or do you have purpose and vision? And I, 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 I plead with you. I beseech you. I've been there. When I first met my wife, my language was the church raped me. Raped me. Because I didn't have a covering. I sat under bondage. And, and, and this, let me tell you, and this, when you're under false coverings, You'll end up dating men that treat you just like the church. And you'll never leave that person. They don't love you. They don't see you. They don't honor you. They don't appreciate you. But you'll stay there because you've been raised to stay under abuse. Today, specifically, I was talking about false covering. I've been dealing with the positive side of covering for nine teachings. But this one, God says, tell them what happens when you're under a false covering. And the abuse. Many men have left, have, have lost their identity of who they were because they sat under a person so long that refused to help them be who God called them to be. If covering doesn't know how to properly cover you, it could smother you. Some people have died under the form of covering. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your clarity. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for everything that you have shared with us tonight. Teach us, Lord, to follow you. I pray for every person who's been a victim of false covering, who have lost their husband, Uriah, who have lost their passion as Bathsheba, because they was under false covering. I pray, I pray that you restore the pain, the hurt, the disappointment, the things that shatter us when people, when wrong people are in the right places and they do the wrong thing. Bring a conviction to the church that we won't take advantage of our position as kings as apostles, as the prophets, as the best pastor, teacher, and abuse the Uriahs for our own personal pleasure. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Please take out the time and enjoy your marriage. If you're married, spend time with your wife, spend time with your husband. If you're single, spend time with God. Please take out this weekend and watch at least one or two of these tapings. And understand covering. Pray for your leaders. If you have a leader that you're sitting under, you see this spirit coming in your church. Pray for, pray for your, pray for the pastor's wife. Pray for leadership. Pray for every form of covering. That they understand the real purpose, and that we will, we will return to our original purpose of why we do what we do. 
It's a bad thing when a police officer has the wrong mindset about the people. It's a bad thing when doctors don't really love the patients. It's a bad thing when people that over child care in the educational system, you are in a position to empower people, but you hurt. It's just as is bad when we have a president who may not care about the country and the people in the country. It's just as bad as when we have pastors and leaders in position and don't do what the position requires as a covering. It's devastating. It's devastating. That's how we end up with the Trayvon Martins. That's how we end up with people who are killed, murdered. Every great man has this visitation. Dr. Martin Luther King was a powerful man, but there were some things going on in the personal life that somebody knew about but didn't say that about. It. And everybody has it. I don't care who you are. Who is your Joab? Who is the person in your life that will help you be wrong? This is why in the Old Testament, they had personal prophets. The personal prophets could correct the king. Every great man of God needs somebody in their life that can speak the truth to them. And this is why I taught on marriage as a covering. Because your wife should be able to tell you the truth. Your husband should be able to tell you the truth. All right? God bless you. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you Monday, same time, same place. And uh, we'll see what the Lord says if he wants us to finish and do some more teaching on understanding covering and spiritual growth. God bless you. And George, you thank you for your love. Please hit the share button if you haven't did it already. Go back and watch the replay. Share it over and over again. Allow this ministry to go viral. I heard somebody say that, and I agree with that. We have to get it out to the nation. God bless you, and I love you, and talk to you tonight. We'll talk to you Monday. <laughs>